Today we're talking taxi, takeoff, flight, and landing. Carrying on from the startup video, our aircraft is set up and ready to go. We'll release the parking brake, note that the parking light indicator has gone out, and then gently increase the power. It's good practice to test your brakes before we pick up any considerable speed by giving them a sharp tap as we set off. As we taxi, apply the nose wheel steering gradually to ease into tight turns. Attempting to turn suddenly, even at low speeds, can result in you dragging the front wheel and not turning at all. Before we reach the runway, let's quickly go over the angle of attack or incidence indicator. A light travels up and down the scale to indicate the angle of incidence, representing the relationship between our nose and its direction of travel. The green being the ideal angle for landing and approach, through to red where the aircraft's pushed to its limits. We'll be using this to measure how much pitch we need to configure the aircraft correctly for takeoffs and landings. On the left side, we've also got the unit scale with a tape indicating our angle for a more accurate reading. Approaching the runway, we're going to take a moment to uncover the landing gear handle, safety lock. You may also wish to uncover the jettison switches for use in the event if you have any engine troubles after takeoff. Lined up on the runway centre line, perform one final check that you've got everything set correctly, including full flaps. Apply full brakes, run the engine up to full afterburner, and release. Maintain position with gentle rudder inputs. As we pass 120 knots, we'll begin to rotate to roughly 12 degrees nose up. As our nose wheel lifts off the ground, the high gain steering will pop out into the low gain position automatically. Hold your attitude and the jet will lift off after 150 knots, weight depending. Retract the landing gear, raise the flaps at 200 knots, and cut the afterburner as you reach 300 knots. Should you delay on this, the limb warning light and horn will sound as your airspeed exceeds 240 knots with the gear or flaps down, warning you of an imminent overspeed. It's entirely possible to overspeed and damage your control surfaces, resulting in a jam and loss of that control. You'll also see the hypercaution illuminated, indicating a disagreement between the physical and commanded position, should this happen, so respect the airspeed limits to avoid damage. With our aircraft ascending, you can refer to these charts for recommended climb schedules, which can also be found in the manual. Alright, now we're up, let's quickly talk about some of the flight characteristics. First thing you'll probably notice is pulling negative Gs will starve our engine, illuminating the low oil pressure and eventually fuel pump cautions as this happens. Maintaining negative Gs for more than 15 seconds will result in an engine flameout. And as you might have noticed during takeoff, the afterburner has a delay. It goes through an injection period before igniting. So it's best to avoid cutting in and out of afterburner rapidly to maintain a responsive throttle. You should also take care to avoid flying over 700 knots indicated below 20,000 or 750 above 20,000. This results in buffeting and eventually an engine flameout. Avoid letting the engine RPMs drop below 7,000 when you need a fast response from the engine, as it will take a little while to build up power again. You may wish to use the air brakes to slow rather than using power, however it is prohibited to land with them. In addition to our basic flight controls, we've got Combat Flaps Mode, intended to assist with subsonic manoeuvrability. These are opened by a switch on our throttle and indicated by the yellow Combat Flaps light on the top left of our instrument panel. The flaps will automatically extend and retract to stay within limits, coinciding with the limit light. Outside of those limits, the indicator light will flash, and the hypercaution will show until either we slow down within limits or disengage the switch. The most common stall you might encounter occurs if you attempt to roll whilst putting a high angle of incidence. As you apply roll, our aircraft will buff it. Continuing to hold that roll would eventually result in opposite roll, and ultimately put us in a spin. To recover, release the controls, allow the aircraft's nose to drop, and apply opposite rudder. As we settle down, pull up gently. If you need to perform a turn at these extreme angles, you're going to want to make use of the rudder rather than ailerons to avoid this phenomenon. Don't 
Playtime over, we're returning home. You've got two standard approach patterns, but we'll focus on the actual act of landing for the moment. As you reduce speed below 215 knots, drop your gear and flaps. You may see the train undercarriage caution light flash, which occurs when you're less than 215 knots and 8100 RPM with the landing gear up to caution you should you forget to lower it. We'll select approach mode for the sight from the front right panel. You may also wish to switch off the reticule by lowering the light intensity found below the HUD sight. In approach mode, the velocity vector is represented by the yellow square. The altimeter scale on our HUD is in fact barometric, not a radar altimeter, so you will almost certainly hit the ground before this reaches zero. Take every caution to avoid this mistake. As a rare car slows down, aim for about 10 degrees or the green zone. This will put us on speed for landing. Ease your workload here by adding in trim to maintain your pitch at the correct angle. Keep in mind the maximum landing weights and appropriate descent rates for touchdown. As we line up on the runway, we're looking for a glide slope of about 2.5 degrees with our incidents maintained within that green zone. Line up the bar on our HUD and our velocity vector with the runway threshold. Try to maintain your engine above 7000 RPM to keep the engine responsive to throttle changes. You'll need to constantly work the throttle and make small pitch inputs as we go. Don't make excessive power reductions or stick inputs to avoid excessive sync rates. Gradually work your way up or down in a smooth motion to help maintain the correct angle of incidence and engine RPM. At the threshold we'll flare, pulling up to about 13 units or the yellow zone, holding it until touchdown, gently reducing the power. Allow the nose to drop and deploy our drill chute by pulling the green handle backwards to the middle position. Alternatively, if runway length permits, you might wish to do an aero braking maneuver by maintaining our 13 units after touchdown until about 120 knots, after which lower the nose and brake normally to a stop. Returning to taxi speeds, we'll cut the drag chute by pushing the green lever forwards. Do this before you attempt to turn your aircraft to avoid any risk of entanglement. Remember that we need to re-enable the high gain nose while steering and as you pass onto the taxiway, raise your flaps and cover the gear lock and then we'll return to our parking spot. I hope you enjoyed and take care.